I've had the 3D Wax printer for a few days now, and I've had mostly success printing out some samples. But there are some tips and tricks along the way that I learned either through trial and error or by contacting support, and I hope maybe I can share those with you today and they'll help some of you. There aren't a lot of these machines out there and not a lot of users right now, so maybe we can share some ideas and tips and tricks to make this thing successful. There's no particular order to the tips and tricks today, so I'll just start and go into detail as needed on each one. One thing that didn't work from the get-go was the web monitoring, where you put in the IP address through a browser and you can watch your job through the onboard camera. See, it just spins. It never updates and the picture never showed anything, and if it did, it was just jumpy a little bit at a time. Also, the mobile monitoring app for iOS, at least on my system, is not working. Look, just a blank page. It shows the machine, I can add it with IP address, but nothing's there, and I tried wired and wireless networking. Well, I can report that at least one of these issues was solved by doing a firmware update directly from the touch panel on the machine go into the tools as I did here and go into software update. Now even though I did this when I first got the machine, it still had further updates here. So I think you need to do this several times until it tells you that there are no more firmware updates available. And as again, as you're doing this, don't interrupt it, just let it download the package. Then it will extract the downloaded firmware and then it will apply the actual firmware update. Now, as I mentioned, do this repeatedly until it tells you that there's no more updates to apply, rebooting each time. No need to update. Now, after I applied that update, the web monitoring started working. Here I'm refreshing the page and it's responding each time with the onboard camera updating the video. However, the mobile monitoring app on iOS still doesn't work for me, so I'll work with tech support on that. Now, even though I've updated the firmware on the machine, as of this video in April 2016, it's recommended by support to go to this website and download the 3316 firmware zip file directly. You extract the zip file into an update Rodin folder on a thumb drive, put it in the root of the thumb drive and plug it in, and it'll detect that firmware when you plug it in and ask you to update it. And it does different things here than it does when you download directly from the machine, like updating apps, which it didn't do before. So I think this is highly recommended and support even suggested doing this manual update, even though it appeared I already updated to the same firmware version on the machine itself. Well, here's a nice tip if you use the onboard keyboard to enter your wireless password. Notice if I push symbols, there's no dollar sign. What if you have a dollar sign in your wireless password? Press the shift key and it shows you some other characters that were not available before, including the dollar sign. Well, here's one that confused me for a while. This bed unlock and lock button and messages that pop up about it. And what it does is it helps you install this bed sheet onto the heated platform by locking the mechanism underneath. See here I'm pushing and there's some play in this platform under here when I'm trying to lock this in. See how it bounces back and forth? Now I believe if I lock the bed, which I had to hit a couple times here, I was holding the camera and it wasn't working. Now if I lock the bed, I should be able to push this in. See, and it'll engage because there's some tension put on this. So it just locks and unlocks the top bed sheet onto the heated platform below to help you. Now another thing to be aware of on the bed lock and unlock is there is a big long screw with a spring tensioner on it here that I'm pointing to in the back left side and when the bed is the whole way down to the bottom that locks the bed in so you don't need to use the bed lock unlock button when the platform is at the bottom. Now I don't have a video or audio of this but something that's rather alarming is when the machine is booting up or adjusting the head, the extruder head back and forth, when it moves to the far left side, sometimes there's a real loud crack sound. And I'm told this is normal as it's the sensor telling it that the nozzle has reached the far left side. Now here's a tip, use a raft. 
I've only used one other printer, but a raft seems almost critical to do ABS on this machine. And speaking of configuring rafts and other settings, these tips now have to do with the software. Now the 3D Walks desktop software that comes with it is the most engaged as far as being able to print directly to it and be able to view the camera because it was made proprietary by the same company that made the printer. However, some of the options are lacking as far as the fills and the quality of the slicing. So I would suggest looking at other third-party slicing software. Now one of those options would be Cura, which I believe is free, and actually I downloaded it. If you look here, uh, there's a version 15 in the big blue button, and then there's a beta below it, which I guess has some more features and is a little more user-friendly. However, at this time, Cura is fully supported on the 3D walks as far as an INI file with the settings on the older version, but the new beta version 2.1 as of this video um, is not easily supported because 3D walks engineers have not yet provided the JSON resource file that Cura needs in order to define the machine. So they're looking into that. And I played with Cura a little bit, but my opinion is in the end, just get Simplify 3D. It's not free, it does cost $149, but it comes with a lot of recommendations, and a lot of people said it does a much better job of slicing, and I've actually seen it compared to Cura and the 3D Walks desktop software. When I went to Simplify 3D, my prints come out better, and there are so many options you can set. So I recommend if you're gonna be serious about this, just go ahead and purchase Simplify 3D and get on with it. Now you may possibly lose a little functionality, I haven't tried the direct printing from Simplify 3D to a USB port, and I'm not sure if that's gonna be supported because I have my printer set up as a network printer and that doesn't work. But basically I just slice and create the G code in Simplify 3D and then copy it to a flash drive and carry the flash drive to the printer and plug it in, which in some way could be more reliable because you don't have to worry about the USB going down between the machine and the printer while you're printing a big long job. Also, the G-code generated from Simplify 3D does not provide the graphic preview on the display on the printer when the job's printing, so you lose that, which is not a big deal to me. And also, there will be a message that pops up on the screen when you plug it in. It says, this job is not compatible. Do you wish to print anyway? And I've just pressed, yes, go ahead, print anyway, and it's come out fine in every case. Simplify 3D does a pretty nice job too of telling you your statistics as far as build time, how much filament you'll use, and an estimated material cost for your job. And finishing up on Simplify 3D, I do want to say there is a somewhat daunting task of getting the machine defined and the parameters set up for your ABS or PLA, the type of material for your jobs, the first time. Now I just took the settings from the 3D Walks desktop software and the Cura INI settings and you can get those off the 3D Walks support page and I very carefully checked each page of the settings on Simplify 3D and plugged the numbers in and adjusted them to how I wanted them and everything came out fine. But it's not really a plug and play solution. It's not that difficult if you just take your time and go through each option and don't mess anything up. In my opinion, it's well worth being able to use Simplify 3D as my slicer. Now one of the problems we have early on here as of this video, which is April 2016, is availability of filament because it's proprietary and only sold on Amazon by 3D Walks. Right now, we see that there's only a couple blues in stock and a couple yellows in the ABS. So this is some dated information if you're watching this later, but I'm told that filament cartridges were coming in to stock on Amazon late April 2016. The refill filaments, which they're working on so that you don't have to buy this whole box, you can just refill the filament and put a new chip in. They're supposed to be in stock by the end of June 2016. And replacement parts such as replacement beds, or replacement extruders, they should be in stock on Amazon at the end of May 2016. So again, this can be dated information, but I thought I'd get it out there because there's not a lot of info about this right now for people looking to purchase this printer. Well, I hope these tips and hints have helped you out with this machine today. I hope this has been informative, and thanks for watching.